Hello, and welcome to Great.com Talks With. Today, we're talking with Anders Bergman, the founder of QuitGamble.com, an organization who's challenging the status quo of addiction through an open mind and by embracing technology to make the process of stopping gambling fun, engaging, and about something more than just quitting. Hi, Anders. Welcome to Great.com Talks With. We're thrilled to have you here. Thanks for having me. I look forward to have a talk with you guys. Wonderful. QuitGamble.com is one of the many organizations that our company Great.com supports, and we admire the fact that you're helping people to break free from gambling addiction. Uh, before we deep dive into the conversation about specifics of your work, can you please tell us how big of a problem is gambling addiction and what is the driving force behind this, pro uh, behind this e issue? So gambling problems, so gambling addiction is a uh, global global problem. We put together a statistics page and uh, when we looked at the data around the world, it's between 2 and 6% of the global population that has some kind of gambling problem. Then what people uh, say, uh, what the media and what the authorities say might be one thing and what top organizations say is another thing. So what the actual data is, we don't know for sure. But somewhere between two and six percent, yeah, I'd say is uh, it's probable. Mm -hmm. If you convert the two to six percent into the numbers of how many people, it will be millions, hundreds, or uh, millions of people. What do you think is the driving force uh, behind the uh, gambling addiction? Why the gambling becomes addiction to people? So I believe that addiction is an escape mechanism. So we use escapism as uh, the foundation of our platform. I believe that you use gambling to escape from something. Maybe it's loneliness, maybe it's stress, maybe it's anxiety. Maybe you had a fight with your spouse. When you gamble, something amazing happens. All those thoughts are going away. So when I talk with addicts, they describe almost some kind of trance when they when they gamble they might talk about the chance to win but very rarely that is actually the reason they gamble and the reason they continue to gamble so i believe that the, we use the definition of addiction gambling addiction as if you experience any kind of pain and you feel an urge to gamble then you're addicted to gambling. But you could translate that to any other addiction. If you feel any kind of pain and you feel an urge to drink, you're an alcoholic. So it's uh, the definition for addiction that we use is very simple. And uh, yeah, I don't think you need to complicate things so much. Mm -hmm. I like how you described, uh, is it as an escape? Um, when people have an issues, it's for them to, a moment to forget about it, uh, a moment to escape as you uh, described. However, uh, after a while, um, it becomes for particular uh, people um, an addiction and uh, in your um, work, you don't describe um, gambling addiction as a disease, whereas other people might have describe addiction or gambling addiction is a disease. Why is the terminology of not using a disease is important? For me, if we call it a disease, you two things happen. The first thing is that you remove the responsibility of the person. But hey, if you have a disease, you go to the doctor so the doctor can treat you. You get medication, something, but you are not really responsible if you have a disease. So that's the first part. I don't want to remove the responsibility, but something even more important is that I don't want people to feel hopeless. I want to encourage people and empower them to see that they can pull through. And if I say it's a disease, I take away the responsibility for it, but I also make them helpless. So I don't want to call it this disease because I want to empower people and show them that they can 
become free of addiction. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that you mentioned that um, it's the responsibility when we give the terminology disease, we treat it as it's something that is not under our control. But when uh, you are talking about res being responsible for your actions and taking responsible approach to gambling, then the terminology uh, makes sense. Um, gambling industry in general calls for responsible gambling uh, for its players and we at great.com as well, uh, when uh, we do casino videos, we always mention three important rules uh, when it comes to gambling. Never ever play with the money that you cannot afford to lose, never ever play with the money that you've borrowed, or never ever play with the uh, money if you uh, to win the money back that you've already lost. In your opinion, what is responsible gambling and why is it important? So first off, when it comes to responsible gambling, for me, it has nothing to do with money. Mm -hmm. That is something that the industry has started to use. You say that the three things you mentioned was all about money. Mm -hmm. and by, by that definition of what responsible gambling is, a rich person cannot be addicted to gambling. Mm -hmm. Because a rich person doesn't need to borrow money. He will never play with money that isn't his. And sure, he might chase his losses, but I mean, if he has a billion dollars on the bank account, he doesn't really need to chase the losses anyway. But a rich person can also be addicted to gambling. So by, by default, that, that definition doesn't work for me. We have Phil Mickelson, one of the best golfers of all time. He made hundreds of millions of dollars, and yet he still lost tens of millions of dollars to gambling. Of course he was addicted to gambling, and of course he didn't gamble to win. There was something else that he gambled for. So my definition of responsible gambling is if you gamble for fun. That's the only way you can gamble responsibly. If you go and sit in front of the slot machine or if you play it, if you buy a scratch ticket, anything, and you do it for fun. You don't go in with the intention to win. Of course, you would never gamble if you couldn't win, but the primary purpose has to be that it's fun. Mm -hmm. As soon as you start gambling to win or you, you buy multiple scratch tickets because you want to win money, it's not responsible gambling anymore. If you bet on a football game, you might do it to add a little extra excitement to the game or to save your, um, you might bet on your or the other team. So if you if your team loses, it feels a little bit okay or it's, it's good anyway. But um, as soon as you start betting on multiple games, games that you don't watch anymore, it's not about excitement, it's about winning money. And for me, that's not responsible gambling. But we are unique with this uh, definition of responsible gambling. So yeah, that's, but that's how we see it. And that's what we tell our users. And uh, we have positive feedback from them at least. Mm -hmm. I really find it interesting the approach that you mentioned that responsible gambling is not about the money, um, but rather, uh, if I understood it correctly, rather about the feeling of uh, having a particular level of fun instead of focusing of the, on the money, uh, focus on the fun that you can have. So that's, uh, as you mentioned, it's very unique and uh, not many people use that uh, terminology, uh, use that definition. Um, as a, you started this uh, quitgamble.com um, with the purpose, uh, with the vision of helping people to uh, make, uh, to being a platform, to go platform for the people who want to stop gambling. Uh, what makes your platform unique? compared to other um, tools that are available at the moment? So one thing that makes us so unique is that we are online based. Mm -hmm. Most other tools that you, you can uh, get help from 
or either support meetings around the world via GA, the 12 steps method methodology, or you can call a hotline and maybe get into counseling or see a psychologist. And uh, all these things are physical meetings or you have a Zoom meeting. Our intention is to build something that is scalable, something that is inexpensive to use and something that is scalable. So we can use very small resources to help a lot of people. And currently we have two people helping 3,800 people. So it's from that perspective, it's already scalable. The approach we use where we believe that addiction is doing something for the person and helping them find out what that something is. No one else is doing that online, at least. It could be called in psychology root cause, finding the root cause of the addiction so that there is a term for it. Escapism is also a known term in psychology. But the way we use it, I think is unique. We have the happiness test, which is a test that is not saying if you have a gambling problem, but rather try to help you pinpoint what causes pain in your life. And when, you, when you've done the happiness test and when you have found what causes pain in your life, we have built courses around that to try and help you deal with these kind of things. It might be loneliness, stress, boredom, anxiety. It might be worries about your health. And we try to, to build courses around this. And so far, we have 15 online courses. In the future, I hope to have 50. Mm -hmm. but that's where we are right now. So it's, uh, and we have an online community where you can do anything you can do on Facebook, but there are no ads and it's the safe space. Mm -hmm. It's incredible that the team of two people, you guys are already helping 3000 plus uh, people who are in their journey of recovery. So I admire what you're doing and the scalability of your work. That's very, very impressive. You briefly um, touched upon some of the uh, th things that the person who is using your platform um, can test or uh, can get granted or use happiness test and the courses. But can you please tell uh, in detail what the user journey is like for someone who is trying to be um, uh, to recover from gambling addiction or and um, when they become a member in your platform? So when someone comes to us, it's interesting how few know why they gamble. Mm -hmm. Most of them are desperate. They need a way to stop. They want to stop, but they don't know why they gamble in the first place. So the first thing that we help them do is to understand what gambling is doing for them and ask the challenge that question. We might not ask, why do you gamble? But rather what happens when you gamble and try and help them understand what that something is, because that is the key. That is the reason they gamble. And if they want to be free of their addiction, they need to work on those specific things. So that is number one. So if you come to the platform now, you become a member, you are encouraged to take our welcome challenge. And it's a five day course of five videos that you do with some exercises. And the first video is all about understanding what happens when you gamble. And we take an example from alcohol that most of us can relate to. If you and I go into a bar and we see this gorgeous girl somewhere, odds are that we will look over to that girl and we don't go up to them. Instead, we stand in a corner and we say, why would she talk with us? What will we talk about then? For God's sake, what happens if she rejects us? That would be so embarrassing. These negative thoughts are painful. It's something that we would do anything to get rid of. So what do you do when you're in a bar? You start drinking. And alcohol has uh, the effect on us to raise our dopamine levels. And it also dopamine helps us remove these feelings. Dopamine makes us self-confident. 
and uh, gradually your negative thoughts pushed aside. And maybe you dare to go up to that girl, or maybe not. But the key of that story is that alcohol is doing something for you. And for a gambling addict, gambling works the same way. It pushes aside these negative thoughts and feelings. So that is the first step that people come into the platform. That's what I want them to do. And throughout the challenge, they get introduced to different tools on the platform, the happiness tests, different courses. We talk about the addiction. We also help them start setting goals for themselves for what they do on the platform, but also in life in general. When they've done the happiness test, they get recommendations on what courses to do. And the community that we have built around the platform is there to support them. You can read shared stories, you can chat with people. We see more and more engagement on the platform, which is fun. You can uh, use our mobile app as well, so you don't need to sit in front of a computer to, to, be, uh, to join in the platform. Mm -hmm. And uh, our goal is to help people find the sources of pain and work with them. And I believe that the journey of stopping gambling takes a healthy mm -hmm. It's not going to be like a quick fix. Mm -hmm. The problem is that most people try to stop gambling by just staying away from them. And that's why 90% relapse. Mm -hmm. Because they don't, they are not prepared to do the work. Mm -hmm. So we have many users that do the same. They come into the platform, they see what's going on and they are super engaged for a few days and then they think, oh, now I, now I can do this. And then they leave and they don't come back for a few months. But during those few months, they have had the willpower to stay away from gambling. But when the willpower is running out and the urge to gamble is getting stronger and stronger, they will fall back. And uh, I don't uh, necessarily think that relapse is a bad thing as long as you take this opportunity to learn from it. Because anything that is important in life, you will fail the first time you do it. You will fail the second time you do it, and you will fail the third time you do it. But if it's important enough, you will stand up, try again, stand up, try again. And if you learn from every mistake you do, that is part of the journey too. Nothing important in life you succeeded on the first try. Think, think of when you started to walk. How many attempts did you try before you walked the first time? And stopping gambling is its a very important thing for many people, but it's also something they have done for a long time. Mm -hmm. So then it's important that it's a journey. It's not going to happen on the first attempt. In some cases it does, of course. But if you see it as a journey, see it as a process, it's easier to be kinder to yourself, give yourself self-empathy, and um, you will see that you gradually, gradually become free of gambling. When you remove these things that is causing your pain, it's the pain that triggers the addiction. So if you remove the pain, you will also remove the urge to gamble. Mm -hmm. The goal we have is to help people become happier as a person, happier and free. Stopping gambling is just part of that. Mm -hmm. The fact that you mentioned that it's a journey, it's not a one day process, so it's going to take a lot of time and your approach to it as a whole is to look at the pinpoints and the life as a person of in general to find the triggers as you mentioned and the reasons why they're gambling uh it's indeed in the process so you're helping the person to analyze their life discover things um that is uh making them to escape and find the reasons uh why they're doing so and then providing them um the providing them with the tools courses and etc to redirect their energy and to find uh, the meaning 
uh, and uh, with the tools, uh, then the pers the per the person can become happier again. As you um, indicated earlier, we all want to be happy. So <laughs> that's uh, the journey of happiness is important. And the fact that you're focusing on finding that true happiness um, is remarkable. You mentioned that uh, as it's a journey, there's going to be uh, cases where uh, people are going to relapse. How can someone come from that relapse and not go back. Now have to make sure that relapse is a one-time thing, not ongoing. So when we relapse, we uh, it's a mistake we make, right? And mistakes, you can have different approaches to mistakes. The most common approach to mistakes that I have myself most of the time is that you put self-hatred on yourself. You hate yourself for doing a mistake. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that will not help you change mm -hmm. because you actually block your connection with your, with those, uh, your uh, abilities to learn from your mistake. If you use anger, if you use hatred, loathing, and so on, you are blocking all chances of learning. But when you look at why you did what you did, if it comes to a gaming relapse and you start thinking about what happened when I relapsed, what was the situation? What need did I try to meet when I relapsed? Because you did do it for a reason. What was the reason you did it? And when you do that, something magical happens. You start to get connection with the needs behind your actions. And when we get connected to our needs, we will, this anger, the frustration, the, the self-hatred, that will change. You will feel sad instead. Because you feel sad for a reason. And why do you feel sad? Because when you did what you did, you failed to meet another need that you had. That's why you feel sad. So again, if you connect to that need, you, you start understanding why you did what you did. And that actually triggers you to want to learn. Not because I tell you to learn, but because you want to learn, which is also a very interesting thing. That's, that's what motivation is. And I cannot force you to change. I can only get you to want to change, or try to get you to want to change. So we relapse once, and if you take it as an opportunity to learn from, and see, okay, what happened? Why did I do what I did? And start creating distraction strategies, for instance, for those moments, or work with whatever it was that made you relapse that time. What need was it you tried to meet? Can you meet that in another way? Or can you do something about that need? Gradually, the risk that you will relapse will go down if you do this. But I don't, I don't think you relapse once. You can relapse multiple times. But as long as you learn from every mistake you do, it will be fewer and fewer. But like when we start to walk, we fall heavily the first time we walk. We don't even, we can't even sit up. And then when you start standing up, you fall down. And gradually the, the times between your falls are longer. But your journey of stopping gambling starts today, or it started a few months ago, and a relapse doesn't stop that. So I don't like the, the way people count days. Like, okay, I've been gambling free for 20 days. I've been gambling free for five years. Okay, but if you gamble after five years, then you're on day one. Mm -hmm. All that five years is destroyed if you count it that way. So you are on a journey to be free, a journey to become gambling free or whatever it is. Count the days you don't gamble, and you might have a few days you gamble. 
but you have been on the journey for, for five years, or three years, or for 20 days, or whatever it is. Again, then we don't strip them of that motivation to continue. Because if you are in GA and you are on day 100 and you gamble on day 100, you are number one the next day again. And that creates a lot of pain, which in turn trigger you to gamble again. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? Yeah, it certainly does make sense. As um, when you were describing um, the reasons why the people relapse and why, uh, how to approach the relapse, uh, it also comes down to the point that very mentioned earlier. It's understanding the needs, why we're doing particular behavior, and then learning from uh, the mistake that we made. As you mentioned, it's a, a journey. We're going to fail. So uh, you might relapse once. Uh, as long as you are understanding the triggers to your relapse and the need that is bringing you to relapse and then trying to close the loop uh, for that need um, um, as many times as possible, uh, as uh, deeper as possible, that's going to help you to recover faster. And I really uh, find it very, your, your, all of your approaches are very interesting and unique. And uh, uh, when you said like, we don't, uh, you don't like to look at the numbers of the counting, like being 100 day free of gambling or 100 day free, 50 days free or something like that, because usually when you look at the, uh ais or any uh, uh addiction uh, people who are recovering from any kind of addiction they always mention i'm x day free i'm x day not doing that but then one thing happens they have to start from the uh, day one but you are uh, what you are indicating is that you can fail but it doesn't um tell that uh your journey uh, what uh, the progress you have done so far is gone no the fails can happen but the journey continues so you don't have to start from the zero and then you are not discrediting the progress that the person has made before so i really find uh, that uh, way of thinking uh more of a journey process rather than like the uh starting from all over so i find it very very uh interesting and uh something very a uh, food for thought for other people who are looking into the their journeys of uh recovering from any kind of addiction so thank you for sharing that uh, with me and with our audience if someone would like to support quickgamble.com how can they do so well, they're welcome to reach out to us on the platform send me an email and uh, see what what we can do together. Yeah. We are happy to spread the word about the platform to get a wider spread. The more people we can uh, get into the platform, the more people we help. And yeah, there is space for everyone, basically. So it's uh, and like you mentioned, there are millions and millions and millions of people with gambling problems. In Sweden, there are around 300,000 people with some problem. Uh, in the US, there might be up to 20 million people. Mm -hmm. In Europe, in total, it might be 50 million, 80 million. I don't know the exact number for, Sweden, for, for Europe, but there are a lot of people in Europe that have problems as well. And Asia is it's just another matter. It's a black hole because no one knows. There are no data. So it's, uh, there are a lot of people that had problems around the world and uh, helping us reach more of them. That's a good way to, uh, to help us and help other people basically. So it's, uh, Wonderful. The link to the quitgamble.com website will be provided in the description so you viewers and listeners can go to their website and understand the meaningful work they're doing. And you're also, if you are a person recovering or uh, want to uh, recover uh, from your gambling problems, you can sign up for the platform and uh, start your journey. 
Uh, thank you so much, Anders. It was wonderful to have you here. Uh, we really appreciate and admire the work you're doing. And uh, we hope by the next time we talk, uh, the, num the uh, number of your users and the number of the people you are uh, helping uh, will be even more. And with, your, um, with the help of your platform, more people can become happier. Thank you very much, Karib. For you listening, if you enjoyed this conversation, please don't forget to like and share this like uh, this uh, podcast because this will show the YouTube and the podcast algorithm that this conversation is very important and we need to support uh, the meaningful work that quickgamble.com is doing. Thank you and we'll see you in the next episode.